All right, so the next phase of the cycle, I really want to focus in on that M phase, the mitotic phase, mitosis. We need to, uh, you will need to know what happens during each phase of mitosis. And uh, tell me about how, what the chromosomes are doing. You guys know, again, I enjoy my essays. This seems like one of them. There is a difference between mitosis and mitotic cell division. What you've probably learned about previously is mitotic cell division, where you're going to divide the whole cell. Mitosis is a part of mitotic cell division. This mitotic cell division will produce two identical daughter cells, two cells that are exactly the same as the parent, genetically identical. Yes, there is a difference between mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis produces identical daughter cells. Meiosis is going to produce genetically distinct daughter cells. Uh, we're going to get into meiosis in the next lecture. But don't worry, we're going to get there. I'll teach you all how it works. It's a, it's a very interesting and a very important uh, concept when we're getting ready to study genetics. Mitotic cell division will allow us to ace, uh, not us, sorry, didn't mean to say us, them. Gosh, this is really, it really is. I'm talking about me as a, uh, uh, an amoeba. Uh, it will allow other organisms like bacteria, uh, not even bacteria, like amoeba, like um, uh, paramecia, to create an exact copy of themselves. They don't need to mate with somebody else. They can just split. When a cell begins to divide, it creates two identical chromatids, right? We talked about this in the earlier lecture. You have a single chromosome. That chromosome is going to uh, reproduce itself. You're going to have this happen. When does this happen? What phase do you uh, copy your DNA? S phase, S phase during interphase, right? So you double the amount of DNA present. They're going to be connected at that centromere. And what surrounds the centromere? The kinetochore, that belt around it. I know, that's why I call them. We use the kinetochore to help organize the, the chromosomes. It's a belt surrounding them. Attaching to the belt are microtubules. Now, what have microtubules been used for in the class? Transportation, right? In this case, they're going to transport chromosomes from one place to another. To do that, they can't actually physically bind to the centromere, so they bind to the kinetochore around it. And that allows the chromosome to get pushed or pulled. Um, it's sort of like if you've ever pulled somebody by the belt, they have to go where you pull them. Now, there are going to be several steps to mitosis. Oftentimes, people include interphase. I tend not to. Um, interphase is outside of the mitotic, uh, out of mitosis. But a lot of time, people include interphase and then prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis is occurring throughout. I'm going to go through each of these step by step. So if you didn't get them like listed in order, don't worry. The first step is interphase. Good news, we did a whole lecture on this. If you, if you want, you can go and review the whole thing. It was the one like right before this one. Um, during interphase, the genetic material is replicated. The cell grows. The cell checks itself out. At this point, all of the genetic material is chromatin. You don't have chromosomes yet. They're not condensed. So G1, you get bigger. Uh, S phase, you copy your DNA. G2, you're going to check yourself out and um, prepare proteins for mitosis. So this is the most of the cell's life. As the cell enters mitosis, if it's past all the checkpoints, and it goes into mitosis. You enter into the first part of mitosis, which is called prophase. Pro meaning first or before. So the first phase. During, uh, during prophase, first thing that happens is the nuclear envelope begins to dissolve. That is, that nuclear membrane, it's, you know how it's double membrane bound? It goes away. It gets packed into vesicles, shipped to different parts of the cell. That frees the genetic material to be in the cell as a whole. The chromatin 
starts to condense and become chromosomes. And the centrioles, otherwise known as the centrosome, you can use them interchangeably, two centrioles make a centrosome, begin to produce what's called the mitotic spindle. That is, they produce microtubules. They provide an attachment point for microtubules. So the three things happening, the nuclear envelope goes away, the chromosomes condense, and the um, microtubules begin to form at the centrosome. No more nucleus, chromosomes appear, and the microtubules begin to form. That's all step one, prophase. So then we enter into pro-metaphase. Again, what does pro mean? First or before. So this is first before metaphase. The whole thing that happens in this phase, and it's a vital step, is the microtubules attached to the kinetochore. That's it. You attach the microtubules to the kinetochore surrounding the um, centromere. You've definitely got your really thick chromosomes. You're connecting everything together. Moving on. Once you've connected the microtubules to the centromeres, you can start pushing or pulling the chromosomes into position. Now, the way you can imagine this working is imagine two fishermen standing on opposite sides of a room. I guess not a room because there's fishermen, so I don't know, opposite sides of a pond. In the middle of a pond is a, a tire. If they have both caught the tire on their hook, if one of them pulls the tire toward them, the tire moves in this uh, toward that one person, right? At the same point, the other person has to be letting off string. Does that make sense? To move the uh, tire to the other end, the second person needs to start reeling in, and the first person starts to let go of the, um, the string. Between the two of them, they can position that tire wherever they want in the pond by either pulling in and, or releasing the uh, tension. That's what the microtubules are doing. They've latched on, and by either growing in one direction and shrinking the other, or shrinking the other, or vice versa, they can start moving those chromosomes around the cell. So what they do is they move the chromosomes until they're even between the two centrosomes. That's where they're lined up at what's called the metaphase plate. They're lined up in the center of the cell. So metaphase is lining up the chromosomes at the metaphase plate. Next up is anaphase. Ana means um, without. Here we're going to pull these things apart. You're going to take the two sister chromatids and the chromosomes and rip them apart from each other. They get pulled to either end of the cell. So you start off with, um, I don't know, a chromosome. That chromosome is going to double until you have two sister chromatids. You're going to attach these to a uh, microtubule, and that microtubule rips them apart. So anaphase is you're pulling these two um, chromatids apart. It's important to note that at this stage, you have individual chromosomes again. These are not called chromatids. These are called chromosomes. So that's anaphase. Telophase is where the nuclear envelope is going to reform. The chromosomes begin to decondense. Effectively, we're getting right back to where we started. You've got two distinct nuclei now, each of which have the exact same set of instructions in them. So you have two identical daughter nuclei at either end of the cell. So telo, uh, it means, uh, I think it was distant, um, far apart. You're looking at two nuclei that are far apart. 
the nucleus reforms, the chromosomes decondense. We start off at exactly where we started, we end at exactly where we started in G1 with the nucleus. A, chroma, a, a nucleus that has a bunch of chromatin in it. And that's why it's a cycle. This telophase will then lead back into G1. Throughout the whole process, cytokinesis is occurring. Cyto meaning cell, kinesis meaning movement. So uh, the cell is splitting. It begins to split in prophase and finishes splitting in uh, telophase. In animal cells, a ring of actin filaments wraps around the whole cell. Now what's actin good for? What does it cause? Actin causes actions, right? So what you have is a belt of actin. And as uh, mitosis goes on, the belt gets tighter and tighter and tighter until eventually the two cells split apart. This is exactly analogous to how vesicles form. You've seen this before in the Golgi apparatus, except it's happening on a much larger scale. It's happening to the whole cell. So cytokinesis will cause this cleavage furrow to form, the sort of bump in there, and that gets deeper and deeper and deeper until the two cells are split. This cannot happen in plant cells. What's the big difference between plant and animal cells? The cell wall. Cell wall's too hard. Actin filaments can't do this. So instead, in plant cells, you're going to have individual, um, what's called a cell plate form. The Golgi apparatus begins to ship proteins to the center of the cell. These proteins are usually used to build a cell wall. So what happens is you start to build teeny tiny bits of a cell wall that begin to unite until they form a plate and then that plate goes all the way across to form a wall. It's almost like if you were to, um, when you were younger, did you ever try to dam up a stream? All right, when you tried to dam up a stream, what did you use? Rocks, anything you could find, right? Usually the bigger stuff, but rocks. You take a rock, you put it in the middle of the stream. What happens? What? It stays in the water, and the water keeps going around it, right? One rock doesn't do much. So what do you do? Get you get more rocks. You take a bunch of rocks, you start dropping them in the same place, and eventually you build a wall. Eventually, the whole stream gets blocked, and that's what's happening here in this uh, plant cell. You're dropping off individual proteins, one by one, that unite to form a bigger wall. So that's in plant cells. Animal cells, they'll have a cell, um, a cleavage furrow, but plant cells will end up forming the cell wall. For the inevitable question, what's the difference between cytokinesis and plant cells and animal cells? So mitosis ensures genetic consistency. In us, <laughs> I got it right that time, multicellular organisms, that's really important because um, my cells need to recognize each other as the same. Otherwise, they're going to attack themselves. Otherwise, they're going to try and defend um, themselves from what should be their team. It'd be like trying to play, I don't know, trying to play football with, uh, with no jerseys. You just got to figure out who's on your team and just, I don't know, whoever gets the ball, just hit them. What mitosis does is allow cells to be able to recognize each other. It also allows us to work by the same instructions. Um, if you guys have you ever been on a, a team where you had two people trying to be the leader, and I've seen you guys in lab, I know how this works. Uh, you have two people trying to be the leader, and um, sometimes they give conflicting information. Does that make sense? <laughs> Does that make There's conflicting problems. And when that occurs, things aren't very efficient. One set of instructions allows you to have more efficient communication. And uh, that's an armadillo. I found, I found a good picture of an armadillo. It's like an armored rat, pretty much. It's, it's a rat ready for battle. But the cool thing about armadillo is um, armadillo are all born as quadruplets. You guys ever seen an armadillo? If you've ever lived in, the, if you've ever lived in Florida or Texas, these guys are all over. They're pretty much roadkill everywhere. Uh, I know. But if you ever happen to be in Florida and hit a, an armadillo, don't worry, 
because it turns out there's three more exactly like it out there somewhere. So there we go. <laughs> I guess we finally hit mitosis, which is what you've all learned about, I don't know, since way back in elementary school. I remember my kids learning about it. So we went a little bit more depth than you may have gone into during those uh, formative years of your life. But broadly, mitotic cell division creates two daughter cells that are genetically identical to the parent. Mitosis, on the other hand, is the division of the nuclear material of the cell. So using mitotic cell division, an organism can produce an exact copy of itself. A diploid cell makes a diploid cell without a mate, without anybody else. Mitosis, on the other hand, is the division of the nuclear material within the cell. When a cell starts to divide, it creates two identical chromatids, each connected at the centromere. That happens during S phase of interphase. The mitotic spindle, which is made of microtubules, begins at the centrosomes um, or centrioles and binds to the centromere of the, um, well, not to the centromere, binds to the kinetochore surrounding the centromere of the chromosomes. They'll get pushed or pulled into position. The first position they get pushed or pulled into is uh, the metaphase plate. So during prophase, you have the attachment. I'm sorry, you see, you start to see the chromosomes. During prometaphase, the kinetochore um, attaches to the microtubules that are attached to the um, centrioles. Then they'll get pushed or pulled into place on the metaphase plate during metaphase. They line up right along the middle of the cell. From there, they get, uh, they'll get pulled, the, homo homo la la, the homologous chromosomes will get pulled into um, two different directions to create uh, daughter chromosomes. So that X gets pulled apart. Uh, so that's during anaphase. During telophase, those chromosomes are at either end of the cell and the nuclear envelope reforms around them. So you got a lot going on there. Through that whole process, cytokinesis is occurring. Cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm and the rest of the cellular components. They'll split the cell. Now, there are some differences between plant cells and animal cells. Plant cells will undergo uh, will create two cells by creating a cleavage furrow uh, during cytokinesis. That's where a ring of actin contracts tighter and tighter and tighter in order to pop the two cells apart. Whereas in plant cells, you can't uh, use actin to uh, to split them apart because they're that pesky cell wall. So instead, the Golgi apparatus pumps pieces of cell wall to the center of the cell to create a cell plate that expands to create a cell wall separating the two daughter nuclei. These content review questions are there to focus your studies. Uh, just make sure you understand the different steps of mitosis and what occurs at each step, maybe draw it out. Your uh, dry erase board is your friend in this case. Um, in the next mini lecture, we're going to talk about a different process called meiosis, which is similar to mitosis, um, but it's going to involve the halving of the genetic material. So mitosis will create an identical daughter cell. Meiosis will create a haploid, um, non-identical or unique daughter cell. Mitosis might be used to produce autosomes, I'm sorry, it might be used to produce somatic cells or body cells, and meiosis might be used to produce or is used to produce gametes, haploid gametes. So stick around for that.